Ashley Scott learned our top stories on news update today. Public security minister disturbed by the recent murder suicide. Rape accused recaptured at Madawini. 83 Guyanese in BVI to be flown home. Government extends olive branch to the opposition party. An uncovered police constable charged for allegedly stealing gun and ammunition. To begin tonight's newscast, we tell you that Minister of Public Security Kamraj Ramtritan says he is disturbed by the recent murder suicide at Rocked Burbis. A man allegedly committed suicide by hanging himself after he reportedly butchered a police sergeant. Find out more in this Anikhil Jandu report. Minister of Public Security Kamraj Ramtritan said, Several incidents which occurred in the past would have stemmed from how an individual was brought up during their childhood. Minister Ramjitan stated, while growing up on the quarantine, little was heard of these brutal killings. You know, we didn't know about what was going on with this too. That was a sergeant of police, the woman. And we don't know of any report being made that this man was giving him trouble, giving her trouble and so on. And so there is this silence about it that is making it far more complicated. And then our recruits are not with that capability. Sometimes even major sociologists and doctors and psychiatrists can't find the, the default. But um, we are trying, we are resourcing the police more, we are giving them as much training, but anger management is gonna be a big part of it and also some more in relation to how you deal with domestic violence and so on. The public security minister noted that these killings are taking place right across the country. However, the gruesome acts are being carried out often in the county of Barbies. Minister Ramchita noted too that he cannot say with clarity what study has been done to detect the reasons behind those persons' action. He added that the media has a very critical role to play, not only to report on the killings, but to educate the masses. But we're going to try, we have to go talk to people. I want the press to help me in that regard. The press will have to do a number of things in educating too. Minister Ramjitan further added that what is troubling in recent weeks is the silence of law enforcement officers not responding to reports of domestic violence. He said he has been having a bad month with ranks and officers of the Guyana Police Force. They have been drinking, they have been lying late to the seawall, doing all manner of things, leaving narcotics on desk and it's been stolen. It has been a real bad man. But I am glad that people are coming forward now because there was an underlying silence that had created a lot of violence. As you know, silence is violence. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. President David Granger declares that the Caribbean must become a place of peace instead of being a place for war and terrorism. This was mentioned when Guyana celebrated the 41st anniversary of the Cuban air disaster. Yanis Abrams with the details. The commemorative ceremony for the 41st anniversary of the Cubana air disaster was observed at the monument located in the University of Guyana, Turkine campus. President David Granger said, the Caribbean must cease from being a theater of warfare and terrorism and become a zone of peace. The president mentioned that Guyana rejects the use of force to settle international controversy. Guyana bores the crime of international terrorism whenever and wherever it occurs. Guyana reassures the world of its commitment to making the Caribbean a zone of peace. Guyana remembers today the victims of the Cubana terrorist attack. We assemble annually before this monument to memorialize the human cost of international terrorism. Guyana honors the memory of the martyrs of the 6th of October, 1976. Ambassador of Cuba Julia Marchante said that Cuba continues to fight against terrorism. The ambassador said the victims were humble persons and alleges that the terrorists enjoy impunity by U.S. The states 
are called open to fulfill their international obligation without double standards, including the prosecution and extradition of all terrorists without exception. The Cuban people demands to put an end to the impunity still enjoyed by the terrorists responsible for the mid-flight explosion of a Cubana de Aviación aircraft on October 6, 1976. On October 6, 1976, a Cuban flight from Barbados to Jamaica was brought down after a bomb exploded. The 73 people on board the Douglas DC-8 aircraft were all killed. Due to that horrific incident, a monument was erected to remember those victims. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. As the President has assented to Broadcasting Amendment Bill 2017, the People's Progressive Party intends to challenge it in the court. The PPP in a press statement says the act unduly restricts press freedom, expropriates private proprietary interest, and is oppressive and unconstitutional. The party tells the government it is not too late to withdraw the law. As Guyana continues with its effort to aid hurricane-affected islands, 83 Guyanese is expected to be back on home soil away from the devastated British Virgin Islands. Those who cannot locate family members will be placed in government shelters. Here is more from Sandy Ramutar. Minister of State Joseph Harmon said the evacuees will start arriving from the British Virgin Islands this week. According to him, 83 persons are set to return home and a large volume of them will be housed at relatives. The government will assist in finding the family members of those who lost contact with them. In cases where a relative is not located, facilities will be provided by the government to house those persons. Now these facilities, as I did indicate, um, are basically at the Hugo Chavez Center as well as there are some facilities that are provided by the Ghana Relief Council. Um, those, as I said, will be dealt with based on the specific needs of those individuals and government, you can be assured that government will be uh, lending as much assistance as necessary to ensure that they are comfortable once they are brought back here. The last of two 40-foot containers will be shipped to the affected islands this week in addition to the nine already sent. Thus far, 29,000 pounds of items, inclusive of building materials, food, water and medical supplies were shipped. The next phase will see the preparation of containers of building materials to further aid those islands. Additionally, the government of Guyana with support of the private sector and the private aircraft owners will commence the repatriation of approximately 83 Guyanese who are desirous of returning home from the affected territories. Those companies that we met uh, yesterday and uh, they've given the firm commitment that they are on board. Six local commercial airlines will be evacuating the persons from the BVI. While fuel will be provided by the private sector, taxpayers' dollars are expected to play a major role in aiding those persons to return home. The monies garnered through taxes will be facilitating the balance needed for travel arrangements. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. More news still ahead. Do stay tuned. Using state-of-the-art technology and highly trained professionals, let Optique Vision Care assist you with your eye care. Visit any of their four convenient locations at Times Square Mall on Grove Public Road, Helena No. 1 Mahaika, at the Giftland Mall, and our newest location at 350 East Street North Cummingsburg for added convenience. Their doors are open every day in the Giftland Mall, Monday through Saturday at Grove and East Street, every Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday at Mahaika. Call them today, 266-0126-222-7333 or 227-7744. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. 
Don't miss the GTT Pinktober 5K, 10K Walk Run. Join the cause to raise awareness and celebrate the lives of all cancer warriors. Register for $2,000, get a limited edition t-shirt, 300 megs of data, a ticket to see Chronix or Travis Green or your favorite dancehall act, group fitness training at the National Park, and $500 goes directly to the Guyana Cancer Foundation. Together, we can make a difference. Do more with GTT, Guyana's number one network. Baby, is where you're going with so much Windex for clean windows? All them fancy curtains, it's not even Christmas. Hi, girl, mind your own business. I got big plans. But, BB, your house don't even have windows. Eh, hey, girl, you ain't think I know it ain't got windows? Yes, I know it ain't got windows. But look, Mokesh promised me that he carried me down by the window factory when he come home at Eccles. It named Beeson. Like you know nothing, girl. Right now, everybody talking about how Beeson got the strongest windows. Plus, they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind you business instead of you minding me own. Beeson Windows and Doors. Serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office, or commercial building. You're still with News Update. Welcome back. The government is once again extending an olive branch to the opposition party for the advancement of the country. The Minister of State, Joseph Harmon, says it would be wise for the opposition to collaborate with the government, especially at the upcoming business summit. Sandy Ramatar with the details. The vision of the Granger-led administration will be brought to the forefront at the Private Sector Commission's business summit. At this meeting, it would be wise for the opposition to collaborate with the government for the advancement of the country, said Minister of State Joseph Harmon. We believe that this is a conference that is going to look at the economy of Guyana, where we are going, and not an exercise in which Mr. Jack Dio and his people are becoming there to poking shots at the ministers or anybody like that. His comment follows statements made by leader of the opposition, Bar Jagdeo. Jagdeo stated his party will be intensely questioning the government ministers when they meet at the first business summit. The state minister maintains his optimism of a bright future, which he hopes the opposition will recognize. Rather than seeking to work with us to build this country, to improve the lives of our citizens, he's encouraging his councillors not to cooperate. And this is not good. I trust that the opposition will take note and understand that we have a great country, we have a great future. The summit, which is founded by the Interdevelopment Bank, is expected to create an economic roadmap to ensure there is continued development in the country. The business summit will be held on October 11 and 12, where presentations on a wide array of matters of the economy will be made. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Denon Blake has been recaptured two days after he escaped from the Lusignan prison. The rape accused had scaled the prison fence in plain view of the police officers on duty. Find out more in this Nickel John report. The police say the actions of a Suzak Linden area resident has led to the recapture of Delon Blake. Rape accused Delon Blake, who escaped from the Lusignan prison, has been recaptured by a public spirited resident. Commander of a division, Marlon Chapman, stated that the man was recaptured this morning in the vicinity of Grant Sun Road, Madawini, Suzdak, Linden. The commander noted that the police was in pursuit of the man yesterday after he was spotted in the area but lost track of him. However, he was later apprehended by a resident and handed over to the police. The rape accused used his bed sheet and wooden pallets to help himself over the fence in full view of police ranks. Those ranks were stationed in a guard hut overlooking the new holding area at the prison. The police say a detective superintendent has been assigned to conduct the investigation. Director of Prisons Gladwin Samuels noted that after a verification exercise was conducted, it was revealed that Blake was missing. The fugitive whose last known address is Community Creek, West Bank de Marara, was charged and remanded to prison for the offense of rape. Meanwhile, the operation is still ongoing to recapture Mark Royden-Williams, Paul Garaya, and Cobina Stevens. 
Mark Royden Williams and Kobina Stevens escaped from the Cam Street prison during the fiery destruction on July 9. That fire gutted the wooden structures within the prison. Shortly after, when the prisoners were transferred to the Lusignan prison, 13 escaped by digging their way out, 10 were recaptured, one turned himself in, one was shot and killed while one remains on the run. Nikhil Jonda reporting for MTV News Update. Meanwhile, a first-hand visit to the Lusignan prison has been made by Minister of Public Security Kamraj Ramjatan. The minister says the situation is shocking. Here again is Nikhil Jondu. As I went there and I checked what happened, it is shocking when policemen under their noses and prison warders under their noses, people could escape like that. And I really don't know what else to say, but that you are so embarrassed by certain staff members within these units. Public Security Minister Kemraj Ramjitan, during an invited comment following the escape and recapture of rape accused Talon Blake, Ramjitan said if the police service commission disciplined those ranks, then they will be running around the place to make their case. But could you imagine three big men in a platform, just underneath of which the fella put some pieces of wood that they're supposed to sleep on and break away, literally, the barbed wire and came down with a mattress cloth or a, what do you call it? The blanket. I mean, it, it, it is horrific, the irresponsibilities of our policemen. The minister said only on Monday, during the Guyana Police Forces Leadership Meeting, he charged the officers to be highly professional in the execution of their duties. He added that these kinds of events tarnish the image and trust of the Guyana Police Force. Well, for the, the, I don't know if they are placed under close arrest, um, but they are being questioned and they are being removed from that music man prison. The minister, however, believes that a second chance would be given to those officers. In the meantime, they are being removed from the location as the investigation remains active. And that is why sometimes, in moments like these, you are cornered by the decision whether to knock off or whether to chastise and reprimand and tell them to come back and hope that you perform, giving people a second chance. Nikhil Chonda reporting for MTV News Update. Minister of State Joseph Harmon says Cabinet has approved the construction of a new maternal and neonatal unit at the New Amsterdam Regional Hospital at the cost of $23.6 million. This will be the first public hospital that males will be able to witness the birth of their child. The minister revealed that the facility will include private quarters to facilitate both the mothers and the fathers while at the hospital during delivery. The hospital that we are building, the maternal unit at New Amsterdam, is basically going to be the model that we will follow in building new facilities. This maternal unit will consist of labor rooms, including two private rooms, that will enable husbands to witness deliveries, an operational theater, a neonatal unit, and a maternity ward consisting of 50 beds. Additionally, the minister related once the project is completed, it is expected that the region's healthcare sector will function more adequately, providing quality health care for thousands of persons. It is expected that this project, when completed, will enable the region's six health authorities to better take care of the approximately 3,000 maternal deliveries that are done in the region. When asked about government's plans to have such an upgraded facility in each region, this was Minister Harmon's response. The maternal facility at Region 3 has been upgraded. I think the, the hospital at Leonora has been extended to ensure that there is a maternal facility there. In the hinterland, the hospital at Mabaruma and the hospital at Lethem will be subjected to those conditions as well. At Bartica Hospital, at the Essequibo, um, the hospital in Essequibo, all of these hospitals are being upgraded to ensure that we place focus on our women folk who have to give delivery. In fact, 
His Excellency's vision is to have a maternal hospital. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Coming up, agriculture must be protected against natural disasters as it is the key to survival. And City Hall angers border vendors by asking them to remove sheds. So you're going to be a top executive. You're looking into possible careers. You're going to the university. Your parents are proud of your success. The journey begins here. Enroll your child now at the business school and let us help develop their knowledge and confidence to achieve their full potential. The Business School, educating tomorrow's leaders. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. The secret is out. Tyo's Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs. Electrical and household appliances. Clothing. Cell phones and accessories. And much, much more. Me so much in this store, guys. Me Tayo's Future Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit? No, me know the secret. I like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody, Everybody know the secret. <laughs> Building a resilient region to mitigate the catastrophic events of climate change on the agriculture sector will be key among discussions at the 71st meeting of the Council of Trade and Economic Development on Agriculture. Find out more in this Sandy Ramatar report. The Council of Trade and Economic Development Quartet Meeting will see regional agriculture officials meeting to establish an agriculture emergency subcommittee. This will be done to have a coordinated response to disasters in the agriculture sector as climatic catastrophes heighten. Minister of Agriculture Noel Holder said food availability continues to be a plus for Guyanese. He also pointed out a number of projects which are on stream to ensure Guyana is food secure. Guyana has taken targeted steps to achieve and maintain food and nutrition security. The government of Guyana, through the Ministry of Agriculture, has embarked on a structured mechanism to address food and nutrition security within our economy. The implementation of our food and nutrition security strategy is vital in achieving our goal to improve the health and well-being of all persons living in Guyana. The Suriname's Minister of Agriculture, Suresh Algo, said climate change detriments the agriculture sector. As such, challenges cited across the Caribbean will be addressed to implement policies for sustainable development. We should try to solve these issues today and must not forget that only by working together we can work on a sustainable agriculture development in the region. 
We mustn't obstruct each other to trade by using non-tariff barriers. But despite these challenges, there are also opportunities that we can seize and use as a means of improving our economic and social well-being. The use of the Regional Standardized Audit Instrument Tool to integrate climate change and disaster risk management will also be emphasized at the meeting. Sandy Ramotar for MTV's News Update. Minister of Public Security Kamaraj Ramchutan says he is aware that an official complaint has been made by the Special Organized Crime Unit to his ministry. The minister says that Soku is reporting that a commercial bank is withholding information from the unit. Find out more in this report. Minister Ramchutan said the Ministry of Finance was also informed of the complaints. He noted that the Special Organized Crime Unit Soku is investigating the account of the Guyana Rice Development Board, which had transactions of 500 million US dollars. The public security minister is aware that the commercial bank is withholding information from Soku to proceed with the financial investigation. Uh, the Minister of Finance is also, in a sense, very important in relation to how banks are licensed, and he has a unit, uh, the Bank of Guyana, I think, is the licensing authority over banks and banks have an obligation that when a judicial officer, a judge, grants a production order that all these must be given, you have to produce. Minister Ramjitan said without that piece of critical information, investigators will not be able to know where and how millions of dollars were spent. From the excuses that I have seen, it doesn't appear so. Um, it is. Look, I don't want to be critical of a bank not knowing all the facts, but we have gotten the complaints because, you know, these are major institutions of finance. One little comment can okay. cause a rush uh, where banks, you know, people can say, well, they're going to remove their money and that kind of nonsense. So I want to be care careful here and uh, not to lay blame and so on, but it has been brought to our attention that indeed the investigation in GRDB can't move forward because production orders are not being adhered to. A forensic audit was conducted by Nigel Hines and Associates in June 2015. The audit discovered that 100 million Ghana dollars was allegedly loaned to General Secretary of the Ghana Rice Producers Association, Dharam Kumar Siraj. The money was to pay rice farmers who had supplied paddy but were still unpaid. The audit also found that more than 500 million US dollars from rice sales through the Petrocarib agreement with Venezuela had been in GRDB's possession. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The main city council has circulated a letter to vendors of border markets stating that within 14 days all sheds will be removed from stalls so security lights can be installed. More from Yanis Abrams. A letter dated September 26 was circulated to vendors of the border market mandating them to remove all extensions to their stalls so security lights can be installed. This is according to the president of the Guyana Market Vendors Union, Ion Andrews. The president mentioned that the letter also indicated that vendors should do so within 14 days or actions will be taken against them. Andrews said members of the union mentioned that they do not trust the city council and the memo did not possess any stamp to notify it from the council. So they are saying from the time the letter, they, they, you know, we could not have been found right away, but they got on to us and they expressed their concern. And we are saying that... Speaking with several vendors, they expressed their frustration about the letter that was circulated. This shed is important for we and we business down here because we taxpayer and we need thing for you know for facilitate we um we customer. So when we customer come they could feel convenient and comfortable for them under here and do their little business because when rain fall, nobody won't come in here. This place is flood or kind of thing when rain fall, you understand? So we need this shed here, so how will the customers will stand up? What will happen to the produce that we have on the stand when the sun shining? on it. Is there anybody will come into border market if the rain falling and we don't have a shed? When News Update contacted Mayor Patricia Chase Green, 
She mentioned that there was a meeting with the vendors and the issue of security was discussed. Chase Greenfather said several sheds will need to be taken down for security purposes. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. More news to ahead. Stay with us. Gafools proudly presents the perfect block made by the most technologically advanced concrete block making machine in sizes 4 and 6 inches. Perfect because it's the right ratio of cement and sand with sifting added for greater strength. It's stress tested independently by the UG Civil Engineering Department and it's cured for longer life. It's now available at a lower price with a 12.5% discount. The perfect block from Gafools setting a new benchmark. It's John Lewis Styles. Buy one, get one at half price sale. Buy any t-shirt, top, polo, shirt, dress, pantsuit, or skirt suit and get the second one at 50% off. Same goes for shoes, handbags, and lingerie at half price. Hurry, because John Lewis Styles half price sale ends soon. It's John Lewis Styles. Buy one, get one at half price sale. Buy any t-shirt, top, polo, shirt, dress, pantsuit, or skirt suit and get the second one at 50% off. Same goes for shoes, handbags, and lingerie at half price. Hurry, because John Lewis Styles half price sale ends soon. At GTT, Pinktober is the month we celebrate the lives of those we love. Pinktober is a time we raise breast cancer awareness. And Pinktober is the moment we all come together to make a difference. During Pinktober, your $2,000 purchase at GTT gives you data, a ticket to see Chronix, Travis Green, or your favorite dance hall act, and $500 goes directly to the Guyana Cancer Foundation. Together, we can make a difference. Do more with GTT, Guyana's number one network. Relationship difficulties, depression, family challenges, grief and loss are some situations in our lives that can cause us to feel unlike ourselves. Are you facing any such situations? Have you considered counseling? It is time you talk to a professional counselor. Let's talk. Call the helpline on 223-0001, 223-0009, or 223-0818 to talk to a helpline counselor near you today. Your emotions are important. We are still with news update. Welcome back. Minister of State Joseph Harmon affirmed that the investigation has completed into the illegal aircraft which landed in North Rupununi. The minister also stressed if any collusion between officers and the operators of the aircraft is found, then the necessary actions will follow. The investigation into the landing of the illegal aircraft at Santa Fe, North Rupununi has been completed. This is according to the Minister of State, Joseph Harmon, at the post-Cabinet press briefing held at the Ministry of the Presidency. The Minister affirmed if any collusion between members of the Guyana Police Force and the operators of the aircraft is found, the officers will be dealt with accordingly. Um, with respect to the aircraft, uh, yes, there was some communication between um, some persons who from Brazil that claimed that the aircraft was actually stolen. And, um, but we asked them to provide some further information to the Minister for Foreign Affairs and that information has not been forthcoming. The Minister further revealed that the police's report are currently in possession of the Minister of Public Security, Kemraj Ramjatan. Earlier in August, ranks from the Guyana Police Force spotted the aircraft at an illegal airstrip at Santa Fe, North Rupinoni. The ranks reportedly claimed that three men exited the plane and eventually escaped without a trace. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Greater resilience is needed to tackle the existing issue of climate change in the Caribbean. This will be achieved through the creation of a strategy for emergency assistance, according to the CARICOM Secretary General, Erwin LaRocque. 
CARICOM Secretary General Orin Laroc said the wreckage left by Hurricanes Orman and Maria clearly indicates that the climate is changing. This is the first time the region has been hit by two powerful hurricanes in one season, according to Laroc. Never before has a hurricane moved from Category 1 to Category 5 inside 36 hours, as Hurricane Maria did. Events like this are likely to be the new normal and provide proof positive of the reality of climate change. According to the CARICOM Secretary General, greater resilience is needed to tackle the existing issue of climate change in the Caribbean. As such, a strategy for emergency assistance is necessary, which is expected to be formulated at the COTED meeting. He also expressed gratitude for the support given by CARICOM member states to the hurricane-hit islands. I just want to pause and recognize the significant mobilization of our region in assisting all of the affected states, both Irma and Maria. I was able to be part of the, um, witness the, the, the actual um, delivery of assistance from all our member states and uh, associate members as well as from international organizations. And I can assure you that it has been tremendously appreciated. The Secretary General pointed out that 90% of infrastructure has been destroyed in Barbuda, which forced most of the population to Antigua. The island saw 10 reported deaths. In addition to this, all vegetation present in Dominica is said to be destroyed, with 27 reported deaths. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Cybersecurity will be a topic of discussion during Internet Week 2017. According to Minister of Public Telecommunications, it is an opportunity for Guyanese to be educated about newer technology. More from Zianis Abrams. The Ministry of Public Telecommunication will be hosting Internet Week 2017 from October 9 to October 13. The Minister of Public Telecommunication, Catherine Hoot, said that Internet Week is intended for a series of investors locally, regionally and internationally to participate in the annual high-level technology conference. The minister also mentioned that it is an opportunity for Guyanese to be informed and educated about newer technology. I think it really is. We have got at least, I think, close to 10 really good speakers that are going to be here. And so it really is a great educational opportunity open for anybody that's interested in the sector, young or old, come, an opportunity to learn, an opportunity to ask your questions. Information and Communication Technology Advisor Lance Hines told media operatives the week is to give persons information about how the internet works, how it is governed, and policies of the internet. One of the things that happens with it is that every day a new decision is made, a new standard, a new property. and in Guyana, and I dare say in many parts of the region, we don't have that familiarity. So what happens is that if an individual or a businessman decides that they want to get into the internet space to be able to con conduct business. Information Communication Technology Awareness Day is observed on October 9. The conference is expected to feature five days of dialogue and technical capacity building discussions. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. A Bartika vendor claims she is being victimized by the town council. The woman also claims while she continues to be rejected in her request for a stall, many other individuals, some friends of councillors, are giving first preference to rent not one but sometimes two stalls. Lashana Gomes Cornelius with the details. According to Diane Banwari, a close vendor from Four Miles Bartika, she is being singled out by the town council as she is not being issued a stall to apply her trade. Banwari claims victimization. The woman explained to News Update while she rents stalls from several persons within the market to sell her goods, she would continuously approach the council for a business spot but would always be rejected without any substantial reason. The 29-year-old woman further claimed a few days ago some council workers went to the market and ordered her removal from the rented stalls. And I have to wait till the rezone, but how you wait now to rezone a market when the market has opened for so much years? What will happen to people that has already tile, grill, set up the stall? How are you moving them and put them somewhere else? But it has stall in the market. 
They promised me a stall and now they changed their mind. While firmly believing that there are stalls available for rent, Banwari claims she was told that none are available and that the market is up for rezoning. This, the frustrated woman said, is a lie. The mother of two young children is of the firm belief that only friends of the tonsil workers are given first preference to rent stalls in the Bartico market. I was six years I in the market asking for a stall. And I, I said she didn't get this. They said they ain't got no available stall, but it half stall lock up in the market. It half stall that they repossess. They see some people who are in pain. And the rule is if you lock up your stall for more than six days, you're supposed to write in. What is the reason? And if not, they take him back the stall. But they ain't going to the rules because everything just lock up. And they just give him the friends it. And... People coming after and getting this wise expo. Um, the market council. Meanwhile, when contacted for a comment regarding the woman's claims, Bartika Mayor Gifford Marshall explained to News Update that the comments of Banwari are malicious. Marshall further explained earlier in the year it was the decision of council to postpone all allocation of stalls at the market since the plan is to have it transformed into a green market. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius, Cut. Stay tuned for regional and international news as well as the Guyana Stock Exchange. Live healthier. Cook with canola and vegetable oil from Costco and Sam's Club, America's largest wholesale distributors. Same nutrition value as Wesson Oil. Get a case of six bottles of six pint canola oil for only $9,000. Members Mark Olive Oil also available. Imported and distributed by Isaac Investments. Available in all DSL branches and leading supermarkets countrywide. Isaac Investments. Located on the third floor of the Regent Multiplex Mall, Regent and Wellington Streets. Telephone number 231-0142 or 231-0143. This is Annie Bina. She's a clothing designer, and she really enjoys her work. She also likes to hang out with her friends. However, a life-changing event is about to occur. The mosquito that bit Annie Bina is infected with a tiny worm that causes lymphatic filariasis, also known as filaria. But what is filaria? Filaria is a disease that affects a person's lymphatic system, causing some body parts such as their feet or breasts to swell and eventually remain in a swollen state that cannot go back to normal. Filaria shows no symptoms during the early years. Untreatable chronic symptoms can appear sometimes as late as 20 years after infection. Since there are no symptoms in the beginning, most infected persons do not know they're infected, like Anibina. When the symptoms begin to appear, it will be too late. Nothing will be able to make them disappear. Have you been bitten by a mosquito that transmits filaria? Are you sure that you've not been infected like Annie Bina? What can you do then, since you see no symptoms? Prevention is the best cure. A message from the Ministry of Public Health in collaboration with PAHO WHO. by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26 or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Here is what went down at the Georgian Magistrates' Courts.
couple accused of scamming victims into donating monies to a fake church feeding program was on Friday jointly charged for two counts of fraud. Kevin Smith, 34, and Tamika Times, 25, both of Dowden Street Kitty, appeared before City Magistrate Judy Latchman and denied both charges. It is alleged that the couple on September 29 at Georgetown obtained from Neil Ramit $1,000 by pretending they were collecting money on behalf of the Full Gospel Assembly Children Feeding Program. It is further alleged that, on the same day and location, the duo obtained $1,000 from Claire Thomas under the same pretense. According to reports, the duo had a form which claimed to be from the Full Gospel Assembly Children Feeding Program asking for donation. The two accused managed to collect monies from two persons, but when they approached the third person, the man noticed that the form didn't have an authentic stamp from the church. It was later discovered that it was a scam and the duo was arrested. Magistrate Latchman released the duo on $20,000 bail each on the two charges. The matter is adjourned until October 20. Meanwhile, a 21-year-old police constable attached to the tactical service unit was on Friday charged for stealing a firearm from the Guyana police force. Keon Johnson of Tain Burbese appeared before City Magistrate Judy Latchman for simple larceny. Johnson denied that, on October 27 at the TSU headquarters Eve Leary, he stole a 9mm pistol valued $375,000 along with 10 rounds of ammunition, property of the GPF. His attorney told the court that, the constable currently serves the force for more than three years and was placed on open arrest pending the investigation. Police prosecutor Sean Gonzalez told the court that Johnson, along with several others, were caught by police in Denamstel, West Coast Demerara, gambling. Johnson was searched and the firearm was found in his crutch. Gonzalez further told the court the accused confessed to the police that he stole the gun from TSU. Magistrate Latchman released the constable on $200,000 bail since the prosecution made no objection. The matter will be recalled on October 27. Meanwhile, Johnson is expected to be placed before the Leonora Magistrate Court to be charged for gun and ammunition possession. A Route 40 minibus driver, Quasi Seely, also known as Kayan, was on Friday charged for engaging in sexual activity with a 15-year-old schoolgirl. Seely appeared before City Magistrate Judy Latchman and denied that, during February 2017 at the Sheriff Street to Georgetown, he engaged in sexual activity with a child under the age of 16. Magistrate Latchman released the Seely on $200,000 bail and adjourned the matter until October 9. According to reports, during the month of February, Seely and the teen were involved in a sexual relationship. The minibus driver would pick the teen up from her after-school lesson in Campbellville and would go into a hotel at Sheriff Street before taking her home. The matter was reported to the police by the teen's parent after she became pregnant. Finally, a 35-year-old licensed firearm holder was charged for discharging his firearm in public following a shooting incident at a Sandy Bob Street Kitty. Riaz Ali appeared before City Magistrate Judy Latchman and denied that on September 30, at Sandy Bob Street Kitty, he discharged a loaded firearm within 100 yards of public way. He was released on $100,000 bail and ordered to return to court on October 20. Meanwhile, Ali's friend was charged for perverting the course of justice by attempting to throw away the spent shells from the crime scene. Anthony Abdul, 29, denied that on September 30, at Sandy Bob Street Kitty, with intent to pervert the course of justice, he threw away four spent shells from a shooting incident. He was also released on $100,000 bail and ordered to return to court on October 20. According to reports, on the day in question, about 12 hours 30, Ali and his friend, Abdul, were at G-Spot Bar at Kitty. While two police ranks on patrol were passing, Ali took out his firearm and discharged the four rounds in the air. It is alleged that Abdul attempted to pick up the spent shells and throw them away before the ranks came to investigate. However, the men's attorney, Bernard Silva, told the court that 
four men were attempting to rob his client and Ali discharged his firearm at the robbers. The Silver further added that Abdul thought he was assisting the police with their investigation by picking up the shells. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 741. Let's turn our attention to the Demer Harbour Bridge schedule. Our weekly entertainment guide is next. Stay with us. Shopping online is now much easier with Le Park and online shopping service. So, what are you waiting for? Check us out at our three convenient locations. 2-9 Lombard Street, Fogarty's Building Water Street, or 3 Strand in New Amsterdam. For weekly flights, no credit card, no problem. We can make that purchase for you. Get it in a flash. Free delivery around Georgetown. Free customs clearance with our courier service. So call now on telephone numbers 227-1055, 2250837 -2 or 3334262 or visit gtpak.com for more information. It's not my fault that you are so irresistible. You kiss my lips, causing a crave that is unfixable. Every time I taste you, I fall so deep in love with you, Tango. Tango. Relish the smooth, creamy chocolate taste of Tango chocolates Tango. in fruit and nut, almond or pure milk chocolate. It takes Tango. two to eat and two to Tango. Tango chocolates imported and distributed by A. Wahab Trading, Bar Street Kitty, and available nationwide. Tango. The secret is out. Tayo's Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs. Electrical and household appliances. Clothing. Cell phones and accessories. And much, much more. Oh my God, so much in this store, guys. Me Tayo's Pizza Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit? No, me know the secret. I like all oh, you know the secret. Everybody know the secret. <laughs>
evening and welcome to MTV News Update Entertainment Guide. We begin with Pulse Entertainment in collaboration with GMRNSC brings to you Clash of the Decades at the Go-Kart parking lot tomorrow night. Robbie, go ahead and tell us about this event. All right, Clash of the Decades is an event that Pulse Entertainment and GMRSC wanted to do. It's something that brings in all and the new generation together. Um, it's held tomorrow, Saturday the 7th at the GT Motorsports, that's the track, the go-kart track. It's going to be held at the parking lot. Um, you know, we're going to be having so many DJs coming through. All the DJs basically that are having it will actually be there. Shizzle, Energy, Anissa, Ryan, Carl, and Mike Torres, and the list goes on. So it's going to be starting at 4 p.m. at the track. With popular hits from then to now. So they're gonna have fun races with the veterans, you know, the Andrew Kings, the, the Ray Rahamans, the Jad Rahamans, all the guys that, you know, Mark Vera and all those guys that were back in the days, they were, like, you know, idols in racing against the new veterans, um, the new generation. So, you know, you're talking about all the youngsters gonna be there. And we're gonna have a fun afternoon with that and just to see who is, you know, still in their prime. And then we're gonna go into a, a fun evening of great music and drinks and a good atmosphere. Go kart racing go-kart racing the rental carts will be using not the pro carts so it's going to be very fair can patrons participate in this um, activity tomorrow the racing yes providing um you do not consume alcohol and stuff like that if you come to do the race first and then have the after party not a problem and as we continue with the entertainment guide, Farm Court presents Pretty in Pink, a breast cancer awareness event tomorrow night. Sasha, go ahead and tell us about it. Well, yes, it is the month of breast cancer, so we call it Pink Pinktober. So, um, Palm Court, uh, along with Pulse Entertainment, and uh, um, of course, GTNT, who is um, the official sponsor for outfit with the um, Breast Cancer Foundation, they're um, doing a party tomorrow night, Pretty in Pink. So, I hope you're going to be wearing pink, because real men wear pink. Of course. Great. So um, pink is a strong, it's a, it's, a, it's a bold color and we expect everybody to wear pink tomorrow night to show some sort of support. Tomorrow night the ladies, um, this is the, cancer survivors, the breast cancer survivors are going to be here. You can meet with them, have a word with them. They might share their experiences as well. And then we're going to have the DJs, you know, they're going to you know, they're gonna hype you up tomorrow night. Every ticket is, that is purchased, $500 goes towards the foundation. And when you enter, you get a GT&T Warrior ribbon, so you can wear it on the night as well. Right now, we're hustling right now to um, to do some cupcakes for them, because you know they're, everybody's going to be having uh, breast cancer um, events right now. And if you want, I brought one for you out here. Yes, that's all for you. I hope you enjoy it. Patrons attending this event tomorrow will have one of these? Yes, um, we're actually catering for some of that as well, too. So tomorrow night, yes, so come out and support it for a worthy cause tomorrow night. Everybody's going to be here tomorrow night. All the DJs are going to be here. Everybody basically is going to be here tomorrow night. And finally, Miss Ghana World 2017, Vina Mukaram will host a fashion show to raise funds for her Beauty with a Purpose project tomorrow night at the Tower Hotel poolside. And that's all we have for you in this week's edition of the Entertainment Guide. As always, I'm Rajesh Lak and I encourage you to have fun and be safe. Well, that sums up our newscast for tonight, but before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. Public Security Minister disturbed by the recent murder-suicide. Rape accused recaptured at Madawini. 83 Guyanese in BVI to be flown home. Government extends olive branch to the opposition party. An in court police constable charged for allegedly stealing gun and ammunition. The newscast can be viewed online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be rebroadcasted later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours at 30 on Saturday, October 7. On behalf of our news team, I'm Ashley Scotland, thanking you for watching. Remember, intelligence without ambition is a bird without wings. Be ambitious every day. Do have a safe and productive weekend. Good night. Sale, sale, sale. Now at Jero Foreign Use, the brand name clothing. One